Hey, welcome back folks. Today we're gonna do a bit of a review synopsis. The last year that we've had this 1025R, I can't believe it's been over a year since our last review of this tractor, but a few things have gone on, just a handful. So we're gonna tell you all about it. Make sure you stick around. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Now, a year ago at this time, we didn't have the property that we're standing on now, and it's 142, 143 acres, somewhere right around there. It's a big old chunk of land. As you guys know, I have a lot of different equipment. That helps to keep the hours off of each individual piece of machinery, but we have added another 60 hours to this tractor right here, this 1025R. I actually have another 1025R at my house too, but this one lives out here at the property. But not only am I gonna tell you about my experience with this tractor today, I'm gonna tell you about the wheel spacers. We've had bore wheel spacers on here for just over a year now as well. Wanna let you know my thoughts on those. And I also wanna let you know my thoughts on using a tiny tractor like this little subcompact on a big old piece of land like what we have out here. All right, so first let's talk about the wheel spacers that we've had on here. Again, those are from Bora. We did an install video way back last spring. Uh, we have two inch spacers on here, all right? So 48 inches was the original width. That took it out to 52 inches. And I know four inches doesn't seem like it's adding a whole lot, but it's adding nearly 10% in the overall width. And so as you go wider, you start to feel more stable. Now there's a trade off with everything and going wider means you could potentially have compatibility issues um, or tracking issues with your three point attachments or a, a front attachment as well. And we came from running dualies <laughs> on the back of our tractor to now running spacers for a year just to try to test it out and prove it out. And I didn't have any issues. I didn't go crazy wide, I didn't do six inch spacers, which I've had a lot of feedback customers doing four or five six inch spacers I do think you probably reach a point where you're kind of really extending it out and if you're on a lot of hilly terrain maybe putting more of a, a lever point on your axle really don't hear of very many axle issues with uh, shortening the lifespan of these did a whole video dedicated to that and asking people for their feedback did you have axle issues with uh, wheel spacers you know did you have leaks did you have something crack or break Bora and other companies have been selling wheel spacers for years and years and years. So I value safety over machine longevity. And for me, using 48 inch four foot attachments with my 52 inch wide uh, tractor, it hasn't proven much of a challenge, whether it's been a tiller or a land plane. Uh, I did use a 54 inch snow blower on the back, 54 inch uh, snow pusher on the front. Of course, pallet forks don't really matter too. All sorts of attachments that we use with this thing. But for me, big thumbs up on wheel spacers, adding stability to the tractor. They get top heavy, you know, especially if you have a cab, it's even worse. They're long, they're skinny, high center of gravity. Do yourself a favor, get wheel spacers. We've got loaded tires as well. You can get wheel weights, do stuff to widen your footprint and lower that center of gravity. All right, so this is fun. Let's take a little walk down memory lane and take a look at all the projects that we've done over the last year or so just with the 1025R, not with our other machines. All right, so as we go through this list of projects, it's pretty impressive. Bear in mind, we had wheel spacers on the entire time, and we only put 60 hours on the tractor doing all this work. And so the first thing we did is actually go over to my mom's house, and Chris and I helped her move a whole bunch of mulch. We used our sweep all sweeper on the three point to clean up the parking lot. You know, in Michigan or anywhere in the north, the snow piles build up and there's all that sediment when everything melts away and trash and everything else. So we cleaned that up really nice. Then not long after that, we had a whole lot of fun. Two different days, actually, we were out at Sheila's um, rescue farm there and did all sorts of little random projects out there with the 1025R, with a grapple, box blade, bucket with a tooth bar, the brush crusher, all sorts of stuff. Then came late June and we finally closed on the land we're standing on now, which was just an overgrown piece of land. It still is pretty wild out here too, but we started to really transform it. And the first thing we wanted to do was take the 1025 hour with the flail mower out and just mow some trails so we could walk through it. It was really overgrown briars and brambles and thorns everywhere. And so you really couldn't even walk through the fields. And we wanted to do that to make it accessible just to kind of get a better visual lay of the land before we started doing the major work. Next up for the little guy, we took it up to Camp Mishawana, loaned it out up there so they could help clean up their property, use a stump grinder on not just the 1025R, but the mini skid steer as well. Worked really good cleaning that up. After that, we hooked up the flail mower again, took it over to the daycare that my wife and I own. We have a nature area back behind the building that hadn't been mowed yet, was long overdue, and so we mowed some trails over there. I sure do love those flail mowers. Next up, even though we didn't want to, we had to use a 1025R and our 48 inch tiller to prep for the driveway, the 2000 foot driveway that we were putting in. The 4720 at that point had overheated, had been in the shop for quite some time. 
have to make do, do what you can, and it handled it. It was tough work for it, but it handled it. It just took a little bit longer. Then we went into the woods to get some shade, stay out of the sun, because man, it gets hot. Did some landscape raking on the trails to see how that did, then experimented trying to, I don't know, maybe get a little too fancy on the trails and try out a tiller on those trails inside the woods. And that was, that was tough. There was way too many roots, just was overkill, didn't really need it. I think the landscape rake was just fine. That's all we really needed to do just for some regular trail maintenance. Next up, a Labor Day weekend project. The guys had a lot of fun. I was not involved, but loaned it out to some good family friends, and they renovated a whole city lot. It was a crazy cool project that they did. You got to see all sorts of tools in action on the 1025R. Really proved its value, its nimbleness, and that you can get a lot of work done with a small tractor. So we like to show things that go right and wrong around here, let you know if you should try it yourself or not. And uh, we found out you probably shouldn't do this one. So we tried using a flail mower to kind of clean up the trails in the fall, you know, with all the leaves that had fallen down, thinking it would just kind of mulch them up and make it really nice. That failed pretty miserably, all right? So I'd probably stick with a rake if you want to, or um, maybe even a mower deck and just a, you know, a side discharge mower deck and mow them off or blow them off that way. It didn't work too well for us with the flail mower. Then we took a break over the winter time. We did use my other 1025R at home, but once it started to warm up and thaw a little bit around here. We did use the 1025 to grade out the driveway here. It was pretty muddy back in early spring. I guess maybe that was late winter, but it got the job done. And then we tried our hand at doing some planting preparation. We used an all-purpose plow. We used a 48-inch tiller. And we used our stump wrecker in several different locations as well to try to pull out stumps for uh, different driveway areas and trail areas that we're putting in. And then most recently, we just got done wrapping up, putting down 40 yards of gravel for a turnaround expansion area and then grading that out. Land plane's still on here. Just got the work done, worked out well. So we did all that work and 60 hours worth of seat time on this tractor. And that's pretty impressive, really, if you think about it. And that's one of the reasons why the hours stay down on these tractors is because you can accomplish so much in such a little amount of time. And it's funny, recently in, in, a, in a video, I think maybe on the land plane or uh, spreading all the 40 yards of gravel out there. Somebody was talking about how I'm using the tractor too hard. I'm going to wear it out. It's going to be in the shop a lot. And the tractor is designed to do what it can do, right? If it can lift it up, it's okay. It's designed to lift up a certain amount of weight. It's not going to lift anymore and go beyond that capacity. And yeah, I could have used, would have gladly used one of the bigger pieces of equipment as well. And I could have knocked it out quicker, but it shows you, you can still get your work done quickly with a small machine. Now, as far as problems go in the last year, you know, there's one, I can't remember if it was last spring or a little bit earlier than that, but we did have a front axle leak on there. Um, it, was, it was a while ago though, so it may not have been in the last year, but it's been within the last 230 hours because that's what this tractor has on it. Uh, we have had several flat tires. You know, this is a pretty rough area out here. Again, pretty overgrown and wild. So a lot of things have been cut off, a lot of little stubs sticking out, and I'm sure it just hit something more than one time and it went flat. So that's been a pain in the rear. And then we had the tractor overheat while we were tilling the driveway, that 2,000 uh, foot long driveway. And that was dead of summer, really hot day. Uh, it was near the very tail end of tilling when we only had, shoot, 150, 200 feet left to go, something like that. Um, but basically, it shut the PTO off. You cool it down, right? Don't turn the machine off, just turn it to idle. Let that engine and the, um, the cooling system recover. You can watch the temperature gauge just dropping down and get back to normal. So it, it protects itself there, which is a good thing. But really that's operator error. You know, the flat tire that could happen to anybody. Uh, the axle leak is something that was covered under warranty anyway. It comes with a six year, 2000 hour powertrain warranty. So all in all, we're doing pretty darn good. All right, now a lot of you guys are hemming and hawing on what the right type or the right size of tractor is to get for your property. Out here, we've got 140 acres. And if I was gonna mow this field right here, it would take me, well, I'd have to keep mowing. I'd just finish up and then I'd have to start all over again because it is gonna take forever with a four foot brush hog or a five foot flail mower. But we've also got a lot of woods around here, right? And so the 1025 is actually proven pretty nimble inside the woods. It can turn around really easy amongst the trees, you know, putting in trails is great for that. Uh, driveway maintenance, grading that out. The stump wreckers worked really well, popping out stumps when we need to. We didn't use this for snow removal this year because I didn't want to freeze my butt off, but you could put a snow blower, the snow pusher on here. We did that at home with the driveway too. And you could also use this for a lot of trimming, right? Trimming around edges with like an offset flail mower, getting into those tighter spots when you need to, where a bigger piece of machinery just won't fit. And if you are looking for something to maybe tackle 
smaller projects, maybe around your house, if you end up building out here or having a house in your, on your acreage as well, you can mow the lawn with it too. Because if you have a big old chunk of land, you're probably gonna end up with more than one machine anyways, and kind of one that can act as a support vehicle doing maybe a jack of all trades type thing, could be something like this 1025R or a similar subcompact. Now, of course, I think most of you are on smaller acreage parcels, and that's where a subcompact tractor really excels, and that's why that market segment is just booming right now. And a lot of attachments are starting to come out designed to work with these tractors that have a smaller loader capacity, smaller uh, three-point capacity. And so, again, we do sell and ship all over the country. You got to check us out, goodworkstractors.com. Give us a shot. You can buy it right on our website. Just add it to your cart, buy it, we ship it out to you. And I think it's worth mentioning, too, that it's just a an easy tractor to work with and work on and you have really good visibility all around you it's just a simple step up you can see everything right it's an open station so you're just kind of out there in the elements you can get a canopy like this rhino hide and stay out of the sun chris and i just recently bought this company so check it out go to rhinohidecanopies.com but really overall i would highly recommend a subcompact if you're looking at one I've done John Deere 1025R specific reviews. I do think that in the subcompact world, they kind of rule the roost. Once you get into the compact segment, um, the gap really starts to close with Kubota, with a lot of the other competitors that are out there. But with a quick park feature on the loader, the bucket, the drive over mower deck, the easy on, easy off backhoe, it's, it's really hard to beat the subcompact market. So I'm not a John Deere dealer, all right? I'm an independent tractor attachment dealer. And I would totally rip this tractor apart if it needed doing. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I struggle to find bad things to say. This goofy ROPS is kind of annoying. I wish they would design it so that it could fit inside just a standard height garage without having to fold it down. It's nice that it's foldable, but that still is annoying. You know, toolbox could be bigger. Um, overall, it's a really good machine, and, and that's the reason why they haven't made a whole lot of changes in the last decade or so since it's been out, is it's just they pretty much dialed it and hit a home run. So I'd encourage you to look into it if you're looking for a subcompact. Sorry, one, one final thought on the tires. I know you guys want to know, we've had another 60 hours on them now. So these are the Carlisle VersaTurf. They're a hybrid tire of your R1, R3, and R4. So your ag tire, your turf tire, and your R4 industrial tread pattern tire uh, kind of merged all together. I think they've been an amazing tread pattern out here again. We have had some flats. I think that would have happened with any of the tires, uh, only on the fronts, not on the rears. I give them a big thumbs up on that as well. I'd get them again. Um, probably a little slightly aggressive if you're turning a lot in the same spot on your lawn. That could be said with any tractor tire, I suppose. Um, but that'd be the only downside. I, I've mowed with these on my lawn and been just fine as well. You just really with any tire, you want to be careful on that on a tractor this size. Alrighty folks, so that's my spiel. That's the two year review. It's a 2018 if I didn't mention it. So it's four years old. So it's pretty low hours, pretty good shape. It has been sitting out here since last June, right? We don't have any buildings of any kind, still need to figure out something out here. Uh, so you can see it's not faded up too bad. Maybe a little fading on uh, some of the black, just a, a hair, but all the green looks really good. We did wax it before we brought it out here. So that helped too. All sorts of accessories, you know, the grab handles, the mirrors, the canopy, the quick hitch, the weight brackets, the tooth bar, the grab hooks, the grill guard, the step, the list goes on. We have a huge discount club uh, partnership as well. So check out the website for that. You save 5% with code GWT at all sorts of vendors. We have a lot more reviews coming up on all the other equipment we have. Try to give you some more confidence or steer you away if need be. So if you wanna check those out, make sure you hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.